I didn't notice it at first, but it's a pirate flag. Wow. What a beautiful area of Florida. I think this is Highway 1 that really hugs the coast. We are going further south. We're going to go further south in Florida. Yeah, not too much further though. And we're not going the whole way down to Miami or anything. We're going to go a little bit further. Uh, and then we'll end up heading west over towards the Tampa area, I believe is the plan. But uh, for now, we're going south a little ways. That's just such a spectacular view out there. And there are seen properties for sale, like six acres <laughs> of coast property. I wonder how much that, uh, I wonder how much it is an acre. This is all residential. I, you know, there's no businesses. Six acres of residential property along the coast here. I bet, I bet it's, I'll just say, I bet it's not cheap, right? And where I seen that property for sale was, it was where the highway was a little further from the water. The six acres was actually, you know, your driveway was on that side of the road. So you had this big, this big plot between, I mean, you know, right on the water. It's not like it's one of them properties on this side of the road, right? When you get on that side of the road and you got some acreage, yeah, that would be, uh, that'd be pretty nice. Go private dock and all that, all that sort of stuff. Look at these. Pretty, pretty nice homes in here. Pretty nice. Two boy. boys. Well, we're now off Merritt Island and crossing the Indian River. It is windy out here. Oh, wow. Okay, that was Route 404 that sent us west a little bit over here to I-95 south. So we'll go the rest of the way on I-95, I think down to, I think it's Melbourne. I think it's Melbourne, Florida, and then we may go a little further south eventually to Vero Beach. And uh, I really think that's as far south as we're gonna go before we head west down over to the uh, Tampa area. So. This is gonna be about it. I think we're running into a little problem possibly getting down this far in Florida. We were gonna stay back in, I think it's Melbourne, Florida. We we're gonna stay at a Cracker Barrel tonight and there were signs everywhere posted, no overnight parking. Once in a while, most, that's rare. Most Cracker Barrels allow overnight parking. Once in a while you run into one that doesn't. Well, so uh, we had a little stroke of bad luck there, but also the uh, Walmart <laughs> as backup plan. It was uh, also throwaway zone, no overnight parking, so no Walmart. So sometimes as a plan C, do home improvement stores. I've had some luck doing that, like Lowe's or Home Depot, and uh, the Lowe's was was only four miles away and. Same thing, that town of Melbourne, they, they got their parking situation, overnight parking situation. Uh, yeah, no, no, none of that in this town. So it could be just a town thing with town ordinances and laws and stuff, or um, I don't know, or maybe we're gonna run into that more and more down in this part of Florida, because it does start getting busier, uh, more cities and stuff uh, along the coast as you get closer to Miami. So it could be the area in general they buckle down on more, or it could be just that town back there. Now, that's not to say that, uh, usually somebody always say, yeah, cra all Cracker Barrels are starting to buckle down, they're not gonna allow it anymore. I've heard, I've seen that, I've read that on the internet. That is, I've heard that for a couple years now, and that just hasn't been the case. It's just a few isolated ones do that. That doesn't mean they're all gonna start not allowing it, so. Um, and the same thing with Walmart. If I heard that over and over again. Oh, Walmart, Walmart's clamping down. They're not going to allow any more overnight. No, that's, there are a few where overnight camping has been a problem for some reason or another at a particular location, and they do that. So, 
Um, but the, the, yeah, that's once in a while here and there. So uh, anyway, uh, we're still on the road, so we haven't found a place yet. We're going 30 miles to the south, 27 miles, I'm sorry, to the next Cracker Barrel. <laughs> and hopefully everything will be okay there. I'm, I'm hoping it's just the town of Melbourne back there. Just don't like RVers parking overnight in their town. We're gonna find out. It's getting late in the day, girl. <laughs> it's getting late in the day and we don't know where we're staying for sure yet. So let's hope this works out. friendly that's good that's good related things. We're getting pretty close up the road here to one our first location. There's three in mine. Uh, one of them is a museum for sure. Then all kind of relics or old treasures. Uh, one here, maybe, actually maybe two of them are right on the coast. So I don't know. They may be like just offshore of maybe an actual shipwreck and maybe the old ship will be visible. I, I don't know what to expect when we get up here. But uh, shipwreck, you know, shipwrecks along the Florida coast, or, geez, in the Atlantic in general, countless, countless. It's a sub subject that has fa fascinated me for, it's just fascinating, you know, think of treasures and stuff. Um, of course, with shipwrecks are usually always casualties, or in m many cases, uh, yeah, that's not, not fascinating because of that factor. That's a tragedy's tragedy. That's sad, but the treasure aspect of it that's fascinated me. You know, like maybe an old sunken pirate ship <laughs> uh, in the gold and the treasures. I don't know, just fascinating. All right, we're almost here. My first mate, <laughs> Bella's with me. Hey, co-pilot. All right, just passed the sign and said Treasure Treasure Shores State Park uh, or Beach Park Treasure Treasure Shores Beach Park. So this just says Treasure Shores Park. I don't know what we're gonna find here. Uh, this is gonna be our first 
our first little look around. No boat, no pets, no glass, no fishing, boat, surfing, alcohol, or scuba diving. So uh, no pets are allowed here. I um, guess we won't be getting out of the car, or Bella won't. Now we'll see if there's anything to see here anyway. It could be a bust. That's why I picked out three different locations. Ooh, nice beach uh, access up there. Well, from what I can tell, uh, it's just a, a, a nice little park uh, with beach access. So uh, let's, let's, move, let's move on. This was a bust. Here, just up the road, 2.7 miles, is the McClarty Treasure Museum. Let's see what the... Oh, not a whole lot of parking available, but we can certainly squeeze a little Fiesta in here somewhere. Now, I gotta check real quick here uh, to see if this is a dog-friendly area. Because, uh... It's not a hot day, and the, the Fiesta's not... Well, it is in the sun, but I got all four windows down a couple inches, but I'm not going to leave Bella in there for very long at all. So, um, site of sur survivors and salvagers camp, the 1715 fleet. Oh, is this that one of, oh, I thought there was, I thought there was only seven. This was one, um, a fleet of 11, possibly 12 homeward bound merchant ships. There's a... Uh, there's a documentary on Netflix or Amazon Prime or the History Channel or somewhere, but there was this big fleet. Uh, yeah, whatever. Large quantities of uh, recovered uh, coins, which carried away to Port Royal, Jamaica, uh, but the great majority of the treasure was safely regained and moved to Havana by the Spanish salvagers. I wonder if I can. We maybe I can. I know the sun's kind of glaring. Maybe we can pause that and you can read that. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting uh, shipwreck. A whole fleet of them. Probably a big hurricane come in. You know, in 1715, we didn't have the weather technology that we have today. So, uh, you know, they set sail and, you know, the whole uh, fleet carrying all kinds of gold and valuable stuff uh, went down. So, and some has been recovered, and there are even modern day uh, recovery things still looking for some of the stuff that has, wasn't found. Some stuff is still there. I think these pictures are depicting that very crash in the, the storm, what they uh, imagine, imagine it was like. Probably some stories, okay, I don't know if there were survivors or not, or if some stories depicting the scene. Uh, yeah, I made it back and these were taken, taken from some of that or just pure imagination maybe what it was like so alright let's go over here a big old cannon here at least from the era I don't know that could be possibly a, a, an original from the uh, recovered oh, it's a, uh, uh, it's a reproduction. The reproduction of this late 17th century Spanish canyon carriage was hand fabricated by Douglas R. Armstrong. So the carriage it's on is, uh, uh, you know, is a reproduction. But I guess the canyon, you know, judging by its roughness and everything, it's probably all it's probably original. Got it plugged up. And this is called the. Uh, Survivors in Sal Salvage Camp, August 10th, 1715. Uh, you know, survivors that made it, it's kind of depicting a uh, scene of what camp when I might have been like after the wreck. Mm, they decided they got a somebody caught themselves a wild boar. Guess that's what it's gonna be for dinner. It does say here an estimated 1500. Uh, men, women, and children survived the wreck. As far as artifacts go, don't know. They're showing a movie in there. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a couple things up here, maybe. The model of uh, one of the ships. And we were the Golden Age of Pirates. Hmm. Actually, I worked with the indigenous more quickly. Oh, I guess that's a. I guess that's an anchor. But uh, can't quite. My friend Corey. Uh, uh, this large anchor from a 1715 Spanish treasure fleet. Um, a galleon is one of the several stream anchors normally carried on a Spanish galleon. Some cargo survives, silver and gold trinkets, and coins have always been considered to be the treasures of the treasure ship. Oh, that's all silver. And the emeralds were weapons of war. Oh, I oh, I got crossbow. Oh, of course, a sword. Let's keep the old cannonball. Imagine we're in that stuff. Hmm? I guess in wartime you'd want some protection so arrows didn't pierce your chest. <laughs> I don't know how to do any good uh, stopping a cannonball. Uh, some basic tools. Iron pins and iron spike heads. Iron nails. Mm, iron planking nails. A couple on the port. Loading. This is called ship loading. From the 1976 National Geographic Society. Yeah, looks like a nice painting. Some other pottery. And that is a copper pot. Oh, look at these things. No idea what those are. For other purposes. Some pottery. I guess. Get some folks have found some stuff. Oh, a couple more displays here. Yeah, it's buttons, buttons and rings, a candlestick base. Hmm. What's left of an old sword blade? Even though the French government a pistol changed stock. hands, it didn't change style of government or whatever. Uh, oh, a gun powder, really that's a gunpowder scoop. Yeah, we're, this never made it to Spain, period, any of this stuff. And this is all. Wow, these are actually copper ingots. Huh. Could melt them down for uh, to make other things out of. Copper ingots were made by pouring molten metal into a, a shallow depression to form a puddle. So, big copper discs. <laughs> Little knife handle. Oh, pretty cool. Some other tools, a claw hammer and cradle, an axe, There's a deck plate, a dead eye strap, which I don't know what that's for. Okay, we're entering a restricted area, and um, I don't know, the uh, guy in the office said or the park ranger or wherever his uh, role is in there. He said, come on back. He says, you can pretend you're a pirate and everything. I'm like, what? <laughs> so I don't know what to expect out here. I don't know that I'm gonna pretend I'm a pirate. What's this thing? Oh, uh, oh that's interesting that they put these lids on it to keep the uh, sun from fading these things. How many places do you go and you know, there's uh, information boards 
and you can't hardly read them anymore because there's so uh, so much UV damage to them. Uh, all right, I see what he means up here. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> well, there is the Atlantic Ocean. So they have this deck out here. Oh, this is pretty cool up front here too. So, hope it spins, yeah. <laughs> sailing, sailing, right? Now the front of this is made up like a like a wrecked up it's intentionally built uh, kind of wrecked looking up here wrecked <laughs> and look at it there I see what he needs I didn't notice it at first but it's a pirate flag <laughs> it's all right huh So that documentary that I watched, I mean, it was like in this area of Florida, uh, you know, documentary showed like different, where they did like sonar tests and stuff and they found the breeze and stuff and uh, divers, uh, you know, they were going and checking out and finding stuff and uh, in recent times. So it's just, it's hard to imagine the amount of shipwrecks that could possibly be out there, you know, besides that one fleet. just. I don't know you know history there's been a lot of a lot of ships over the years over the centuries so yeah this might be another one that's hard to read let me see if i can get to see if we can pause that read that anyway well i'm glad it's a little bit cloudy out today because it is cool actually uh short sleeve is fine but it's uh it's almost with the breeze there it's it's you can feel a little just a touch of cool in the air uh but i don't care i don't like leaving the bell in the car i've kind of made fast tracks through here um uh, get back to the car i think we've been gone less than 10 minutes i can say the air is cool four windows down you know pretty healthy amount too should be fine Oh, this would have been the better one to read because the uh, sun's on this side. There you go. You can pause that. Easy to read. That's long been a fascination of mine of, you know, sunken, old sunken ships in the treasure. that might have been on them. It's kind of cool to do. There's one other stop. So that was our second stop. There's one other stop. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'll have to go check it out. Yeah, I do not make a habit of this and I don't like doing it. So we made her quick. Unlock. What? <laughs> yes, it's comfortable in here. <sighs> All right. It's actually nice to get out of the cool cool air. It's, it's, it's not bad, it's short sleeves, but it's a border, borderline whether you want to put a jacket on or uh, long sleeves. <laughs> I've come to realize something. Well, the next place is called Mel Fisher's Treasures. It almost sounds like the name of like a secondhand shop. <laughs> um, I think it is nautical related um, and not a secondhand shop. But I've come to realize that unless we see something like really, really, you know, special up here. I don't think I'm gonna find what I'm looking for. And that was would be, you know, watching the documentaries of, um, you know, about shipwrecks is, you know, it's done in such a way, a very pro professional and well-researched way that it really spikes the imagination um, and, and tell, tells a story very well. Um, so that sparks my imagination. I don't know that these little, places with little odds and ends is gonna do what I was kind of expecting so, but we'll find out maybe it'll be something like really cool up here it'll be just awesome you know fingers crossed I don't think we'll go again I, I don't I you know it's just I think it's a maybe a more expensive or expensive well, probably expensive too the last place was two bucks that's not the uh, issue here it's uh, a more 
extensive, not expensive, extensive uh, museum. Uh, and, you know, I do have Bella, Bella to consider. Oh, I think she has to go do a little pee pee thing. So, um, yeah, that's a that's the thing about taking Bella along with me on different things. Maybe I should have left her back at the RV. Maybe you, now you understand why sometimes I do. Uh, kind of prevents me from going in some places. Mel Fisher's Treasure Museum and Nautical Gift Shop. So, um, oh, they have a couple cool things outside here. I'll have to think about this. I could again maybe go in for you know five or ten minutes. Uh, there's a there's a woman pirate. <laughs> Little there was a cannon back there. There's another one up here. Oh, there's a pirate. Hey, Mr. Pirate. A big old anchor. Wow. Huh. So I don't know. Maybe we'll. Maybe I'll just give her a break. And again, that's another cannon. It's you know. I'm sure that's a a survivor. It's got some deterioration probably from being down in the salt water so long. But the base of it is uh, you know remanufactured uh, cannonballs. No, wait. And I don't know what these things are. Actually, it looks like those are train wheels. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's possible, you know, uh, some train cars or whatever was uh, shipped over. On the, I don't know. Probably not on a, as a pi big pirate ships, but <laughs> that was before trains. But it could be just some relic that was found. There are, there is railroad stuff that has gone overseas. So maybe we'll just wrap this video up here, I guess. I don't know, I'm undecided. But you know, right here along the coast too is the, like I was saying uh, before, there's no shortage of these little grills, bar and grills and eateries along here. There's the Mo Bay Grill. There's uh, Earl's Hideaway Lounge up there. Say the museum. Very Florida coast type stuff. Huh? Huh, girl? Now, here is an interesting map out here that shows the different shipwreck locations down along the coast with, uh, where is it? The, um, let's see, beach access to shipwreck sites. So, I guess maybe, I guess if you had you know, some little craft went offshore with some kind of sonar and metal detectors. Haha, <laughs> the coast light magnets. Um, so, I don't know, I guess you could go. It's probably not, not far offshore. I think the hurricane, I think the hurricane kind of blew them, <laughs> ripped the sails off them and everything else and kind of blew them, blew them into the coast where they got beached or or just turned over or wrecked whatever i don't know yeah the 1715 spanish treasure fleet shipwreck shipwreck locations with beach access huh all right oh there's interesting once you've seen the ocean bottom paved with gold you'll never forget it i did peek my head inside the door and there's definitely a big gift shop in there and uh, a lot of a cannon a lot of little trinkets you know kind of like we've seen back at the other place so uh, my decision's made I'm not gonna leave Bella in the car to go and snoop around we're gonna we're gonna get on our way so I guess anchors aren't too difficult to find it's another big one yeah. all right we are out of here All right, so back to the RV we go. Um, move along, I guess, somewhere else in Florida. Uh, thanks for coming along with us today. It was uh, somewhat, somewhat fascinating, I guess. 
I, uh, I'll stick with I'm a little disappointed. I guess the imagination really can roll with the well done documentaries. I do enjoy those. And uh, it was cool seeing some actual artifacts, I guess.